Hello, welcome back, everybody. I am your host. I am joined here with my co-host, Steven. What's up? We are Two Mike to Some Theories. We're a podcast that focuses on excavating the deep ideas behind your scalp. Not only do we get our shovel of gold and search for the diamonds in the rough, but we polish them, shine them, clean them to a crisp. Thoughts on that, Steven? It's just made it sound like we're about to bury somebody. No, no, no. Not bury somebody, Steven, but discover them. Mm. Wait, that sounds just as bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds just as bad. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, <laughs> well, I didn't think of it as in we're discovering a dead body. I thought of it as in we're discovering, you know, the next big thing. All right. Well, let's just move right on along. So today, there's this new documentary that just finished its trial. Trial is in its real legal case called I Love You, Now Die, The Commonwealth versus Michelle Carter. So, where do you want to begin, Stephen? Oh, man. What a roller coaster it was watching it, huh? Definitely. Um... Well, let's kind of go back. We did uh, speak on, I guess, who's to blame last week in our Gone Girl episode where we talked about the, uh, what's her name's parents? Amy Dunn. Amy Dunn's parents. Uh, you know, who's to blame for their actions. And... Uh, so let's just kind of get into it now. I mean, really, who's to blame? Hmm. So who's to blame for the death of Conrad Roy? Yes. So then a quick summary before we go farther into it. The Michelle Carter case is a case where Michelle Carter had a boyfriend, Conrad Roy, and she texted him to essentially commit suicide and there's a big legal case that began 2014 and it was just concluded 2019 so the big question behind this documentary that everyone's wondering is can you kill someone by through text if you tell someone to commit suicide via text should they charge you are you guilty are you innocent is it involuntary manslaughter? Is it manslaughter? What's the legal ramifications of that? So, is Michelle Carter guilty of what? What's the... They got her for manslaughter. Involuntary manslaughter, but... Mm-hmm. So, what, what's the question you want to ask me specifically? Is she guilty? Well, yeah, can we actually blame her for her actions? Can we blame the parents for her actions? I think you want to ask who's to blame. Is that what you want to ask? Or... All three. Or who do we blame for? Who do we blame for the death of Conrad Roy? For all three of those? I guess it depends who you ask. Right. Look, th- there's no doubt that what she did was was pushing Conrad towards doing something, towards a specific action. Mm -hmm. It's not whether she's she's to blame for it or if she's guilty. It's should we take her to court and does she need to serve time? What do you think? I don't think she's completely to blame for what happened. Okay. I ultimately think, you know, uh, I ultimately think Conrad did the deed. Like he took his own life. It, it was it's straight up on him. Um, but she did have a big part to do. She had a big part in it. I mean, well, I don't know. It's hard. Before you go any further. Let me tell you and all the listeners at home, 
for this episode, let's focus on the first part, let's part one, and then for the next one, we'll talk about part two, because it is split up into two one-hour specials. Right. So, and in the first one, they mostly spoke about the legal trial and what happened. So, what was your question? I, I just... <laughs> Well, then I guess we'll leave this for the second one then because they were, I guess in, in my question was more trying to get into their, into their past and who was to blame and why they're to blame. We can still talk about it now. Who is to blame? Well, the second one does talk more about the answer of why. Mm-hmm. This one's more about what happened. That's true. I mean, there was no legal statute in their state that specifically said uh, you telling somebody to do something and they end up doing it is a direct, uh, like they can directly connect it to you. So they basically retroactively instated that, that legal statute, that law. And that's why they actually tried her for that or charged her with that. All right, Steven, I need you to quit tip, tiptoeing around. Let's get right to it. We're playing Modern Warfare. You're on one end. I'm on the other end. We're talking shit to each other. Ah, oh, man, Steven, you fucking suck. I always got to carry you. Look at my KD ratio. I got a 4.0. You over here with a 0.5? Steven. And then out of a blind rage, I just say, you know what, Steven? Go fucking kill yourself. Now, next day you do it. Am I to blame? Am I to blame for that? Ooh. It's hard to say. There's so much more information you would need to that you would have to present to whoever's making that decision. I think that's why the judge had one of the toughest I guess. He had a tough case trying to distinguish whether what constituted involuntary manslaughter. Mm-hmm. Because when they were interviewing people in the dog, a lot of people made that argument. There was one guy who said, if I tell someone to jump off the bridge and they do it, am I accountable? And then the lawyer was talking uh, in the courthouse. He brought up a similar argument, but he said, if I'm there and I tell someone to jump off and they do it, now you can't blame me for that. But if I'm there and then I tell them, do it or else I'm going to push you and they do it. Now they're found guilty. But in the, in the first example, they're not. Mm -hmm. And I think the tough decision that the judge had to make and ultimately what his decision was based on was the text that Michelle Carter sent to her friend where she told her, she told her friend he would still be alive if I didn't tell him to go back in. Mm Mm-hmm. But just, there's no concrete evidence that she did do that, though. Because remember, mm-hmm. there was never actually any text mm-hmm. that said "get back in the car." It was all that. It was the media that that ran with that. Um, the only thing that they had was just a forty-something minute conversation or a phone call that was logged so, through the phone records, and then four months later, where she texts her friend admitting guilt. But even then. She wasn't a, uh, a, the most reliable source to go off of because they did prove that, she, or they did try to prove that she was always lying to her friends. Right. And they mentioned that in the second one how they, how the media was cherry picking what they wanted. Mm-hmm. So they were choosing stuff that would strengthen their argument and disregarding stuff that would weaken it. Right. And the media, they did that in the courthouse. And then the media, again, they tried to paint this picture of her, of Michelle being this horrible, manipulative, attention-seeking person, which took. It was really funny when you said in the beginning, what caused Conrad's death? They asked, in the beginning of the doc, they actually asked his father that. One of the interviewers asked Conrad's father, who's responsible for Conrad's death? And you know what bothered me? It bothered me that he 
that he took so long to think about it. I don't know if you remember, but he mm-hmm. took a deep pause. Then he said, I believe the exact words would be, it has to be Michelle Carter. Which, I don't know, I just found it uncomfortable how long he took. If he really thought it was her, I feel like he should have said it was her right away. Or in the second we find, find out more about his relationship with Conrad. Which is a little bit alarming. So it's just interesting how you brought that up. And what do you think about how he, what he said and how he said it? Well, definitely. I mean, not only the the, the father, but even the mother. She, just her body language kind of looked like she was... Instead of being like distraught and sad that her son had just died, she was more kind of excited that she was in front of a camera... Um, I don't know, it's got that vibe from her that she was basically, you know, excited that she was going to be seen on TV by a lot of people. Wait, wait, wait. Whose mother? Conrad's mother. Okay. So it's interesting how Conrad's mother didn't know about the relationship. And there was actually a part where they were interviewing her and she was saying, you know, I thought I was a good judge of character. And she was talking about Michelle Carter. So, do you think you're a good judge of character? Do I think I'm a good judge of character? I sure hope so. It was also when her mother, Conrad's mother, was speaking about relationships and how she didn't know the person that Michelle Carter was. Right. She didn't even know that they were going out. And the reason for that was, well, because it was an online relationship. They never physically saw each other. So I believe in her mind, she was thinking that a relationship means that the other person has to show up. So she was thinking in terms of how she grew up and how she how she saw relationships and how how they how she thinks that they should be now. Right. So she was taking these old values and trying to apply them now. Do you think she was? Or I should say. Why do you think that people are so hesitant to adapt to the new world? Because it seems like that's what she was doing. She was, she kept trying to explain everything that was going on around her in terms of how it was before. Hmm. I don't think it's that she didn't want to accept it wait I never said she didn't want to accept it yeah uh, well you're saying old or I guess the older people don't want to accept the way new things are now yeah well why don't they want to adapt to it oh why don't they want to adapt to it I think in her case it's hard to adapt when you don't really know what's going on if she didn't know what's going on you can't really be expected or want to accept uh, this new way of dating. Then putting it on Connor, should she have known what was going on with Connor? As a mother, yes. That was also kind of alarming. Like, why didn't she know what was going on with her son? Now, granted, I'm sure her son was secretive, as was Michelle with her the issues that she was going through. She was also very secretive, but should should the parents of Michelle and Conrad known what was going on between them? Definitely. Why? Well, I mean, at least I would think going through a divorce, I mean, I, I get your battling your differences with your significant other, but if you have a child, you should kind of already understand that it's going to be a lot more difficult for them so you might want to take an extra uh extra steps to kind of care for them and help them you know readapt to this new situation that they're going to be living in i don't know that that seems it wasn't that way there may 
they don't really give too much of a backstory besides the the violence that happened or that they state that happened. So maybe they were too infused in their in their dispute with each other to even really take the time to notice what was going on with Connor. Right, and I brought up the parent, the father in the beginning, and no, I told you that it was kind of alarming that he took so long to right. to blame her. I think because of what was going on with the parents, the whole divorce issue and them not talking, they were, I think they blame themselves for what went on with Conrad, but they don't want to admit it. Yeah. I think anybody, if you knew you were guilty and you, and you were in this, or you, if you felt guilty, you were in the spotlight. I think most people would try to defer it onto somebody else. Right. And I think they know, I mean, it's hard to say because we don't really know what went on. Mm-hmm. We, especially not from the doc, it doesn't really go in depth into Conrad's family too much and what went on with the divorce and what was going on with him and what was he doing. It doesn't go too deep into it. It just kind of tells us he was unwell. There was a divorce. There was a bit of violence, but I think what was happening is they were being neglective towards Conrad, not on purpose, but because of the divorce. And maybe there was a little bit of not hatred towards him, but a little bit of tension, some hard tension. And sometimes it manifested violence in terms of the father. And I think in terms of the mother, I think she was be ignoring him. Because there was a text that Conrad had with Michelle. And Conrad was saying to Michelle that Conrad was looking up how to kill himself or how to commit suicide. That's right. And then Conrad said that he believes his mother saw it and ignored it. Right. Now, we don't know if that's true. We don't know if that's a lie. She may have seen it. She may not have seen it. But if she actually did see it and ignore it, maybe that was her way not of punishing him but of punishing the father almost right like if he ended up doing it she could have came at him saying this is all your fault maybe but again that makes up a lot of assumptions that yeah he's telling the truth that she did see it but hmm. it's very complicated the relationship that for all of them for all the parents and conrad and michelle hmm what was the topic you wanted to bring up? You wanted to bring something up. I did. So basically in 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 the statue of the state that they were in, they got her for involuntary manslaughter, which is an unlawful killing that was unintentionally caused as a result of the defendant's wanton or reckless conduct. And basically the there wasn't anything that was that ex- explicitly said that you know you're you telling somebody to do something directly connects you with them if they did something Mm -hmm. like if they actually did it um and they retroactively you know got her for that even though it wasn't like it wasn't actually said at that time or actually done at that time um but what I wanted to talk about was here in California or in Oregon and a, and a couple other states, um, it's actually legal for a doctor to assist you in your own suicide. Um, granted, it's, it, a lot of it, uh, I think it's for terminally ill uh, patients mm-hmm. um, that basically, you know, want to voluntarily give up their life because you know they may be in too much pain or uh you know or anything of that sort but it's i mean yeah it's it's frowned upon there are people that are trying to fight that because they think that you know it's immorally wrong but why is it okay is it only okay because they're doctors that you know they're not being charged for this Hmm. Well, I would probably have to say yes, 
but also because there's a the person that um wait why are they not being charged for it yeah like why is it okay it's it's essentially it's literally the same thing conrad does not have the will to live he doesn't want to live he's in they explain to us that he's in so much pain and he wants to finally be at rest um essentially michelle and the doctors is doing the same thing and yeah this is this is a straight up reach because obviously they're doctors they went to school for this they know what they're doing michelle is just a a young teenager teenage girl um no hold on if you point out the similarities i'll point out the differences okay so how are they similar you already said one that the two different people are in pain they're in pain they don't want to live uh well, hold on. Before you go any further, then I'll say that in one case, I believe you said for the doctor assisted that the patient was terminally ill. And I would assume that that person is about to die or near death. I'm not sure. I'm just going to assume that. And yeah, that's what I would count it with. Another one is... At least I believe even without Michelle or without the doctor, I think they would try to commit it either way. I would have to say no, that the patient in the hospital, he would not try. If that wasn't an option, I think you think the patient, this is a, this depends on the patient, of course. The patient would probably not want to die. Maybe he does, but in the case of Conrad, we know that he did want to. Mm-hmm. So there's no denying that he he did want to. Very true. Let's see another similarity. I can't think of one. <laughs> well, another, the difference, another difference, would be that one, I suppose, is supported and it's legal. There's the legal government that's backing it. You you have a professional there with you. And in the case of the actual hospital and the assisted suicide, you had someone that's medically there for, it's going to sound weird, but for your best interest to make sure that there's no complications in the time that you're going to die. And in the other one, in the case of Conrad and Michelle... There's no one really there assisting him. He's just kind of doing it on his own. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like... Well, actually, I don't know if that analogy would work, but if you're trying to build a house, you would go to a licensed contractor that knows what they're doing instead of you who doesn't really know anything doing it by yourself. Like, with a contractor, you're, you'll have everything done by the book. And if you're doing it by yourself, you're going to run into some mishaps because there's obviously things that you don't know. If you go to the contractor, you know you're going to get the, desi- the the desired result. Right. And in the other case, it might not work out. Right. The question we should ask is, what if assisted suicide became legal in the world? Do we want that to happen? Well, I suppose it's already legal, you said, in California and Oregon? In Oregon, and and starting in 2020, it's going to be legal in in a couple other states. Um, I think New York and Connecticut. Don't quote me on Connecticut, but I know New York for sure. Yeah, I don't know. Because an issue I see arising with that is, I'm assuming that's only for people that are near death. Yeah. Because when you say it, I think of... Did you ever see Futurama? Yeah. How they had suicide booths? Yeah. So in Futurama, they had the red telephone booths that you see in Europe. And they... Same thing, those booths, but they were suicide booths. So you go in there and I believe you drop down. And when you drop down, they you somehow died. Yeah, you're right. And there was a, I think there was a couple different options of of how to of how you would do it. 
I just remember Bender would always get in it and yeah. like, yeah, let's do this, baby. So when you say assisted suicide, I it, it reminds me of that scene in Futurama where they had assisted suicide booths. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think that's the case in what's going to happen now. But it depends how liberal they get when, if they do con- like continue to pass this. If hypothetically they pass this in in all fifty states and in all all around the world, yeah, then it becomes who's allowed to do it. Yeah, can and a teenager why? do it? Yeah, why? Who? I suppose money might even be an issue. How much? Um, because I would assume this isn't a cheap or free process. See, and if it was an expensive process, I think it would give people a like when they would weigh the the their options. I think they would just opt to do it themselves to save money. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of too. Why would you want someone to do it for you if you could do it yourself, right? Especially if it's like very expensive. Hmm. I mean, new, new message? <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. Uh, th- the only thing I can think of is they're going to try and sell you one. It's going to be painless. Right. Maybe and they I... could... But even at that, 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 I don't think it'd be worth it for the people. If, if, you're, if there's people like Conrad who are actually in pain, who don't, or as in their own words they don't want to suffer anymore i don't think pain would be or, or not having pain would be a uh, a selling point not when you say not having pain you mean or, not suffering sorry i said that wrong i think a painless death would not be a selling point for them okay for the people trying to push assisted suicide mm-hmm so they would need something more convincing to make this public and available to everyone. Yeah. The painless thing, I could see that working. Only only for people who are terminally ill. That they're, they have stage 4 cancer. That they have some something that's incurable and they know they're going to die. The people at the end of their lives, that's the only people and the only time I see assisted suicide maybe being allowed. But even then, it still becomes a moral issue should they do it. I suppose if they're physically suffering and mentally suffering, are we going to allow them to do it? Or should they do it? But then since you brought up the whole pain and suffering... Do you remember in the doc when there was an old lady and she was speaking about Conrad's death and she was at the site where he died. She was getting interviewed and she raised a question, which I'm going to tell you, where does evil come from? It's pretty hard to say. Oh, let's work through it. Let's start with what is evil? For starters, the opposite of good. Okay, what's the opposite of good? <laughs> Evil. <laughs> um, malicious, malintent, something. Yeah. Some, something evil, right? Something evil. <laughs> something deliberately that that's deliberate to to causing some type of pain or distraught okay so that's that is evil so then where does it come from it's like asking what's the root of all evil Uh, it it could come from anything but where where does it where is like what is the root of it where where does it actually start from Mm mm-hmm One could say, from deep inside you. That was the, when I first heard her ask the question, that's the first thing I thought of. 
She said, where does evil come from? I don't know. And I automatically thought, well, from ourselves. Because evil is, it's almost like evil is this idea that we create. Because if you, you can't look at a, at some animal killing another animal and say they're, they're evil because they killed the other animal. So I don't think killing is necessarily evil because it's common in the animal kingdom. That's how a lot of animals survive. They kill other animals. So killing can't be evil. So then what about, what was another one, malicious intent? So malicious being uh, you're intending to do harm on someone else. Mm -hmm. Harm, is it harm, pain, and suffering? What's the What's the actual definition of it? Do you know? No. But then the reason why you do cause harm to somebody else could be you're trying to protect yourself, you're trying to protect somebody else, you're... It's not just for shits and giggles. Well, yeah, that's when it leads into intent. And I think in the Michelle case, that's why she was found guilty because she had the intent of him to, of wanted Conrad to die. You following? But, yeah. Hmm. Well, the dictionary definition is profoundly immoral and wicked. Okay, but see, even then, immoral is, there's nothing, I shouldn't say there's nothing, immoral is defined individually based on how I think something is immoral, because moral means something that, yeah, I don't even know what the definition to moral is, but what's moral to me could be immoral to you. That's right. So then what's malicious? Something malicious to me could not be to you. Kind of like the beauties and the... Is it... Is when, it oh, fuck, I forgot that. Uh, beauties is... Uh, something in the eye of the beholder. Oh, right, right, right. That's why beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but that's why I said that we are the creators of our own evil because we define what evil is. Mm. So what Michelle did, she might have not seen it as evil, but the rest of the world sees what she did as evil. Now, is it or is it not? I guess that depends how you define it. That's right. I, 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 see, I did see this one picture of, of a cross... This one time, and it said, uh, every man creates his own heaven, its own hell, and it, its own... And it's like this whole thing within that cross. I thought that was cool, but I, I never really meant anything. I'm not saying it means anything now, but now that you said that, it like, immediately made me think of that. Right. Hmm. Before we go any further, let's conclude this. Talk about the second one. But... Sign us off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Thanks so much for listening for two part one of this two part series. Stay tuned. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you haven't already, like, share, subscribe, tell your friend about this. Episode two on this series is going to be even more in depth. Uh, but either way, thanks so much for listening. My name is Steven. This is Pedro. We're two mics and some theories. Peace. <laughs>